Joining me now is David Bonson. He's the creator of the six-part series No Free Lunch in Defense of Free Enterprise. He's also founder and managing partner at the Bonson Group. David, what could a debt ceiling stalemate mean for the American economy? I think it has more to do with a scare into financial markets, uh, largely misunderstood in that it can enhance volatility, people worried in either the stock market or bond market that it means something more significant. What I don't think it means is what a lot of left-wing media is sort of fear-mongering around, which is that they would literally default on their debt. And, and this shouldn't be hard to define. A default means a failure to make a principal or interest payment on one's debt. The United States Treasury has ample cash flows many times over to pay its debt. And so if there is to be a political stalemate on this debt ceiling, which I hope there is not, and I think is an absurd way of getting to where we want to go, but if there were, it would not mean a default on the debt. Okay, well, that's good to hear. The new Republican head of the House Ways and Means Committee, Congressman Jason Smith, says Americans are calling on Congress to get our fiscal house in order. How do you think that lawmakers need to go about doing that? Um, by lawmaking, I think that Congress has been tasked with the uh, burden in the Constitution of legislating. And so the way in which money gets spent that we don't have is because of lawmaking. The legislators are spending and approving budgets and appropriating monies above and beyond what we have. The debt ceiling is just a mechanical and bureaucratic component of how Treasury operates. If Congress doesn't want us to spend up until the debt limit or above the debt limit, Congress doesn't need to approve the spending. And this is where I believe we're making a big mistake. I've, I value the idea of a balanced budget, a right-sized government spending within its means. But using the debt ceiling as a way to sort of manipulate uh, expenditures that have already been approved by Congress is, I think, unfortunate, and it never ends up working out. All right. So we've got that stalemate on the Hill, and we've also got recession, which has become an economic buzzword these days, mm -hmm. continuing to be talked about. Do you think that's where we're headed in 2023? I'd be surprised if we avoided a recession. I don't know that that is going to end up being the operative question, though. I think it could very well hinge on how severe of a recession we have. And I think back to the 2002 recession when uh, George W. Bush was president. It was only two quarters. It was very shallow. It really largely only affected a particular group, uh, largely in the technology sector. And I think it's very possible we end up with a recession like that. Um, but based on the Fed tightening that we saw in 2022 and the need uh, for purging some of the excesses we had, housing was way too high. There was a lot of those things going on. It's difficult to imagine getting off of that without a recession. I don't believe we need a recession to get rid of inflation. I think that's awful economic thinking. Um, but at this point, it looks like when you look at industrial production, manufacturing, some of the things that speak to robust American economic growth, they're definitely lagging. Right. All right, David Bonson, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for having me.